Manx Radio Sport. Welcome on then to Manx Radio Saturday Sport Classifieds for Saturday the 12th of October. It's just gone at 5 o'clock, Simon Quine with you, through until uh, around about 6 o'clock this evening. Joined by uh, Tony Meppham, Dave Christian to look at rugby and Ben Cunningham here as well to look at hockey. Uh, full games across the uh, four divisions in football. We've got four rugby games to look back at as well and uh, mixed Premier League, mixed Division 1, mixed Division 2, 3 and uh, also the mixed under-15s league in hockey. We'll also be joined by uh, Rob Pritchard after half five as we bring you team news as uh, FC Isle of Man are in action this evening at the Bowl, taking on Panningham in that game uh, six o'clock kickoff. and like I say Rob will be live there not just with team news but with a full commentary from at 6 o'clock this evening. And uh, we'll start, as always, with the uh, classified results, just getting the last few football scores in. So we will... Oh, no, I won't. We will go with uh, football. Tony Merton, thank you very much. Just handing me the important paperwork back, and we'll go with uh, Canada Life Men's Premier League. And we'll start off with uh, A United 4, Foxdale 2, Laxey 3, St Mary's 1, Onken 2, Russian United 3. Peel 1, Corinthians 2, Ramsey 2, Moran 1. We are awaiting a result from St George's against Junior Mills in the Canada Life Men's Premier League. If you know that result and have the details, one double six, one double seven. if you could let us know, that would be great. In uh, the Arden and Druggan Limited Division 2, Douglas High School Old Boys 8, Castletown 2. We're awaiting results from Douglas Royal against Colby and Malou against Michael United. And I'll bring Tony Meppham in here. Colby 9, Douglas Royal 0. We haven't got the Malou one yet. OK, thanks very much, Tony. So uh, Colby 9, Douglas Royal 0. And uh, staying at Arden and Druggan Limited, Division 2, Paul Rose United 3, Ramsey Youth Centre Old Boys 3. Canada Life Combination 1, St Mary's 8, Laxey 0. Uh, Corinthians 4, Peel 4. And we await the result from Foxdale against Air United. Moran 0, Ramsey 6. Russia United 2, Onken 3. The game between Union Mills and St George's was postponed. Arden and Druggan Limited combination at 2, Braddon 8, Jims 1. Castletown 1, Douglas High School Old Boys 2. And uh, awaiting results from uh, Colby against Douglas Royal and du- Douglas Athletic against Governors Athletic in Arden and Druggan Limited combination 2. And uh, also uh, Ramsey Youth Centre Old Boys against Paul Rose. We await those results. Like I say, if you do know those, one double six, one double seven. 7 uh, Let's move on to rugby in the Regional 2 Northwest. It finished Sandback 50, Douglas 21. In the Counties 3, ADM, Lanx and Cheshire, Vagabonds 21, Dillacell 48. In the women's NC2 North South Division, it was Vagabonds Ladies 22, Eccles 7. And in the Manx Shield, Ramsey 54, Western Vikings 5. Dave Christian joining us a little bit later in the programme to uh, go through those games in more detail. In hockey, the mixed Premier League, Vikings B5, Backers B1. Castletown Celts 3, Valkyres B1. Harlequins A3, Valkyres A4, and Backers A5, Vikings A1. In mixed division 1, Backers C3, Vikings C0. Vikings D2, Castletown Southerners 5. Ramsey A2, Valkyres C4. In mixed division 2, uh, Ramsey Ravens 3, Valkyres D1. Castletown Camags 3, Backers Colts 2 and Harlequins B4, Castletown Cushags 0. Moving on to Mixed Division 3, Harlequins C2, Vikings E4, Castletown Cosney 6, Backers Mixed Books 1, Ramsey Rookies 3, Castletown Carrick 0. And uh, we only have the two results so far in the mixed under-15s league. That is Backers 4, Vikings 1 and Castletown Sharks 6, Harlequins 1. We are awaiting a result from Castletown Sabres against Ramsey. Uh, Seven and a half minutes after 7 o'clock. No, it's not after 5 o'clock. Sorry, I'm wishing our evening away there, uh, gents. And uh, Tony Meppham joins me now. Let's uh, have a look at uh, football first of all. And we'll start off with the uh, game you were at, Tony. Uh, All the action coming in the second half at Douglas Road. Yeah, it was to decide the final score, but um, certainly in the first half it was pretty busy. And uh, credit to uh, Peel, he took advantage of that. The first uh, five minutes or so, 
Um, it could have quite easily been a different story, but uh, Corinthians stood quite firm. The wind was, uh, you know, pretty breezy right the way through the whole game. And uh, when we had that storm through as well, hailstorm, I uh, took cover. So did everybody else. <laughs> and uh, when you're looking at the players out there, you felt really sorry for them. But uh, I didn't feel sorry for the game because I thought it was a great game to watch. Both teams full at it. And, um, you know, if anyone says that, uh, you know, Manx football's in a bad place at the moment, you should have seen uh, today's uh, game because you've got one or two uh, maturer players playing for both sides. But the rest of it were littered with 16, 17, 18 year olds and a few 21s as well. It was a great game to watch and uh, what a bit of class from uh, Thomas Brown for Peel. Certainly is in uh, great form at the moment and uh, he beat three players, then he beat the fourth and scored and uh, Matthew... Uh, stood there, no chance, Matthew Quirk, uh, to stop that one and Peel took the lead and deservedly so too. Uh, they got through to the uh, half-time whistle and uh, then Corinthians came up with a bit more of a positive uh, attitude and it was uh, the wind helping them a little bit as well but it was all a bit stalemate but Corinthians playing well and then it was Jao Marquez who uh, gained the penalty, he got the penalty awarded against him uh, or for him I should say against uh, an infringement on him and he put it to the opposite side where the goalkeeper went. And 1-1 it was, and then everything to uh, play for. And then some good defending at the back for Corinthians at times, and also for uh, Peel kept the game at 1-1. And then it was uh, Marquez who got the second after uh, Joe Middleton it was who took the first chance. It was blocked, and then when the ball came out, Marquez was there to tuck it past the goalkeeper to make it uh, 2-1. But then Peel got a bit of a chance as well because Darren Kane was sent off. It was a red card. Darren knew that as well. Uh, got involved with uh, Paul Whitehead and, um, you know, Darren got his marching orders. And as you would expect, Corinthians then had to defend in numbers. And well done to Ben Qualtro. He spotted what he had to do and did it well. He brought on an extra defender off the bench and uh, just tried to show things up. And 2-1 it finished. Great advertisement. Either side could have won it. But credit to both sets of young players. Absolutely superb to watch. And, I like the look of uh, Greg Kelly as well, who came on for Peel in the uh, second half. He looks a player as well, 16 years of age, only slight. But uh, I know you're a Peel boy, Simon, but um, you know, you've got a good football mm -hmm. side there. Everyone thoroughly enjoyed the afternoon. Peel will be disappointed with the scoreline. Corinthians will be happy with it, but enjoyable game to watch. And we're used to this being one of those, the, the big games at the top of the Canada Life Men's Premier League. How important do you think those three points will be for Corinthians come the end of the season or is it still too early to say? I think it's too early to say but it's, I think it's massive because uh, you look at the league tables at lunchtime. Peel had played six, uh, won five, drew one. Air United had uh, played six, won five, drew one. Corinthians had uh, played seven, won five, lost two. So that's sort of uh, points gained. And I think it's just a, a little bit of confidence for uh, the players because, um, you know, it, it's a lot earlier than I thought this because I thought Corinthians, I didn't expect them to be in the shout for uh, Railway Cup, but uh, certainly they are at the moment. There's still a lot of work to be done because the clubs around them. But um, Peel, Peel will be disappointed. But then I think, um, you know, both teams looking at it would have been happy with a draw and it nearly was that, but... Uh, it was just the whole afternoon, the excitement, the way the game went, listening to the other scores. It was uh, really nice to watch everyone taken on board where the league table would sort of sit tonight. And uh, as Corinthians that have gained a place, uh, they now uh, move into second place. OK, and let's uh, go a step further up the table then and uh, look at Air United, who uh, came at 4-2 on top of Foxdale. Yeah, and uh, I'll be uh, defending uh, Foxdale a little bit here because there were two or three key players missing. Lee Gale wasn't available uh, today. I believe um, uh, Jay Chatwood wasn't uh, playing either as well. Steve Bettridge, who's instrumental at the back for them, he was uh, missing through suspension. Uh, but they did all right. It was Air United 4, Foxdale 2. Whether it's win conditions, I don't know, Simon, because Foxdale were 4-0 up. Andy Ball with an own goal. A bit of a steward's inquiry on that one because Andy used to play for air. So I hope there's no favouritism there. Try to stick up for you, Andy. Yeah, Johnny Shields got the second. Danny Orham got one. And Chris Duggan on the score sheet as well. So Air United will be delighted what's gone on beneath them. You know, the way the points have uh, gone and have uh, showed today against the team that was lying in fourth place that uh, they're the better team and uh, they won 4-2. And Laxley needed to win today to keep within touching distance of the teams above them and they did just that against St Mary's. They certainly did and uh, I think St Mary's were leading at one stage. Uh, Joe Burkus it was who got the goal for St Mary's but uh, for Laxey, Tom Gowan with a really good goal. Ethan Hawley on the score sheet as well and Ben Ramsey ben, uh, so, sort of taking a, a little bit of uh, of the light 
if you like, at uh, Laxey because uh, he's only 16 years of age, but uh, he's been playing really well. Johnny Palmer said he's uh, much improved this season and uh, Laxey keep themselves in touch towards the top of the table as well because now that puts Laxey on 15 points. They move ahead of uh, Union Mills and possibly, I'll check the goal difference, might just sneak ahead of Foxdale. I don't think they have, but uh, it's all to play for because everyone wants to play in the Plum Properties uh, Railway Cup semi-finals and final. I think uh, just looking at the table I've got here, which I think has been updated with today's results, uh, Fox there about nine goals ahead on goal difference. That's it. Yeah, yeah just um, elsewhere. Onkum very close to getting that crucial point. Just that last minute winner uh, for Rush United in the game. Rob Pritchard was at for us this afternoon. Yeah, and I've got a bit of a report from uh, Rob, which uh, we do appreciate because it's always nice to uh, get a bit of a, a cover on the uh, game. I'll see if we can uh, get it up. I think he might have uh, sent it uh, to me. We'll check on that one. We'll come back to that. But uh, with the way it's gone today, it was uh, Onken 2, uh, Russian United 3, Sam Cubbon with a goal for Onken. Andy Asbridge uh, got the second one for uh, Russian. An own goal, uh, Stevie Harris with his name on the score sheet. And Matty Lamb, who uh, played for FC Alaman last week, uh, he got the third one. So a big three points for uh, Matty Lamb and Russian. And speaking of big three points, it was a big result for uh, Ramsey, just their second win of the season today against Moran. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, this one with Ramsey, when you look at that league table, uh, you just say to yourself, a team that was right up there uh, last year, why are they sort of uh, down in the bottom half? But when you look at the top sort of eight or nine teams, there's not a lot between them. So that's why it is. But uh, Ramsey uh, today, a lot better. They'll be happy with uh, that one. Uh, I haven't got the goal scorer, so I've got Moran's goal scorer. Thanks for that, uh, Connor Gilbert it was who got that. But uh, Ramsey will be chuffed to bits with getting those uh, three points, 2-1 win. Uh, I still haven't got any details on St George's against Union Mills, Tony. I don't know if you've had those to come I've just got that come through, minutes. but I've got the report through from Rob as well. Thanks, Rob. It was uh, Onken 2, Russian 3, 1-1 one, one at half time, so nice and tight. Uh, Russian scorers, um, we've said, but uh, a largely uneventful first half, but Russian led through a huge volley from just inside the box following a free kick out left. Onken then equalised in the stroke of half time. A great half volley from Sam Cubbon, who doesn't score many, so uh, he's scored a beauty today after Russian failed to fully clear a free kick. Onken led for the first time three minutes after the restart. A route one goal kick was uh, nodded into Andy Asbridge, who, despite having three defenders around him, half volley, a strike in off the post from the edge of the box. That's Andy's second in two. Russian missed the chances to equalise and they were awarded a penalty. On the hour mark, Aaron Hawley stepped up and his effort was well saved by Joseph Waddington. Russian will level through eight minutes later, a corner from the right eventually falling to Steve Harris, who half volleyed again home to level the game. The visitors then snatched the win in the 90th minute. A ball over the Yonkin uh, defence fan Lamb, who rounded Waddington and passed into an empty net. Great report from Rob and a great result for Russian. OK, Tony, did you have details St George's Union Mills? Yes, I have. I think uh, yeah. that's just come through. And thanks to uh, Johnny Myers. I think it was uh, 3-1, I heard. And also uh, for uh, Union Mills, they had their goalkeeper, Mason Prince, sent off. But for uh, St George's, it was Kira McNulty, Ed Canner with one and Mikey Hughes with the other one. Thanks to Johnny for that. OK, thanks very much, Tony. That's uh, all the results then from uh, the Canada Life Men's Premier League. Move on to Arden and Druggen Limited Division 2 and a big win for uh, Old Boys against Castletown today. Absolute humdinger and, uh, you know, these two teams are expected to really challenge to get promoted at the end of the season. It was 5-1 to uh, Old Boys at uh, half-time. Uh, George Kearns with four. Uh, Jack Adams got three goals and uh, Jacob Stone got one. Uh, so uh, well done to Old Boys and that. Alex Crawley and Lucas Simmons got the two single goals for Castletown. So I think Old Boys are showing that, um, you know, they're in great form at the moment, at the moment scoring plenty of goals. And with uh, Brad and Michael up there as well, Colby, uh, good result for them today. It's all uh, nice and tight at the top of the Arden and Druggen Division 2. I think just goal difference now separating the uh, top two, I believe, in the uh, in the table there. Yep. Uh, Douglas Roy against <laughs> Colby and Malou against... Uh, oh, no, Malou against Michael United, I think I have got now, Tony. Just okay. give me a if second, could. I will find that here. Uh, do, 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 four all, apparently. Four all. OK, got that one in. Uh, Douglas Roy against Colby, have you had that one? Uh, Douglas Roy against Colby, it was 9-0 uh, to Colby. Um, so if anyone's out there with the scorers, uh, send us through, please. Uh, one six six one seven seven. 
OK, uh, Paul Rose United against Ramsey Youth Centre, 3-all. Good yeah, action-packed that's a, game there. Yeah, it is, because uh, Ramsey Youth Centre were fifth at lunchtime with 10 points and Paul Rose just below them uh, in eighth on three points. But uh, Ross Crawford got a hat-trick for Ramsey Youth Centre and Old Boys. But for Paul Rose, uh, James McGinn got one. Well done, James. Matt Curphy got a goal and Callum Holden with the third for Paul Rose. OK, moving on to Canada Life Combination 1, uh, St Mary's 8, uh, Laxey nil in the early game today. Yeah, I haven't got Laxey scorer, but for uh, St Mary's, uh, Jake Wilson with three, Chris Dowling got a couple of goals, Jamie Skillen got two, and Danny Hoyes got the other one for St Mary's. And plenty of action in this game, Corinthians 4, Peel 4. Yeah, I haven't got uh, the scorers for uh, Peel, but for uh, Corinthians, Kane Riding with two, he got the first and the third. Oscar Watterson on the score sheet once again. Well done, Oscar. And Lewis Radcliffe got the other one for uh, Corinthians. I think Peel led at one stage 2 0, so a good comeback by Corinthians. Okay, and uh, Foxdale won one, yeah. A United nil. Is it? Uh, one sorry, nil? A United nine. Sorry, nine. I'm struggling to read my own scribbles. In front of <laughs> A United nine. Um, again, again if we can have the scorers through, please, that'd be brilliant. Uh, Moran nil, Ramsey six. Yeah, that's, that's all the information we've got on that one. And uh, Russian two, Onken three, an exact reverse of the uh, first team game, in fact. Yeah, and it was. Um, I'll see if I can get the goal scorers for uh, Onken. They might have uh, come through by now. No, they haven't at the moment. Uh, but uh, for Russian United, who were trailing at half time, two goals to nil to Onken, uh, it was Adam Lane who had the responsibility of getting uh, the two goals uh, for Russian. But uh, Russian, one of the top sides in that league, uh, beaten uh, by the league leaders. So Onken are proving a point at the moment in that league. Uh, Union Mills against St George's was postponed earlier on today. Correct. That means we move on to Arden and Druggan. Uh, combination 2, Braddon 8, Jims 1. You yeah, haven't got Jim scorer, but uh, for Braddon it was Lex uh, Medley with 2. Uh, Oja Wastas, I think it is, with 2. Matthew McNee got a couple of goals. Uh, Jacob Kenny and Adam Fair was the scorer of the 8th one. OK, and uh, Castown giving a pretty good account of themselves against uh, top of the table old boys, just 2-1. Uh, yeah, just got the old boys scorers at the moment. Joe Hoy got one and Lance Mukton uh, got uh, one as well. That's uh, Colin Sun. Well done, Lance. OK, and I haven't got any information for Colby Douglas Royal, Douglas Athletic against Governors Athletic or um, Rams Youth Centre against Paul Rose United. If right, you've got I haven't got Rams Youth Centre against Paul Rose, but I've got um, Douglas Athletic against Governors Athletic. It was Douglas Athletic 3, Governors Athletic 2. Talani Akula got uh, one of the goals for Governors Athletic. And Tafik Adikansi, I think it is. Two complicated names for me. I need Rob on this one. <laughs> uh, got the other one. And uh, as I say, Ramsey sent and Polly. We haven't got the goal scorers. OK, if you do have any of those details, one double six, one double seven, we'll give you a mention uh, before six o'clock. Tony, are you rushing off to the bowl to enjoy more of the lovely weather we've got here tonight? Yeah, it's going to be pretty cold, I think, because I think a schoolboy area, I haven't got the fleece on. So I'll have to uh, see what the weather's going to be like. But what a game in store as well, because FC Island Man had had a great run. They showed that they can mix it with the big boys, but that was a big, big defeat midweek. And uh, they'll be looking to correct that one. Hopefully there's a large crowd. Uh, spoke with the referee before who's uh, flown over, never beaten the Isle of Man before. Really looking forward to to the game tonight. And let's just hope that um, a large crowd turns up. It's like everything else. They love the support. They have good support, but it's always nice to have more. Uh, we heard from Paul Jones in the uh, last half of the programme. Uh, that defeat in midweek, obviously, it's completely out of form with where they've been recently. It, it, what do you put that down to? Is it maybe just this period where the games start to stack up? Is it chopping and changing the team? Is it, is it simply just the travel? Um, I think it's a little bit of both, uh, really. I'm looking at the travel and chopping and changing the team because some players can't do the midweek games mm -hmm. because they fly in the afternoon of the day of the match. Then they play that night and then they're up at five in the morning the following day. Uh, to get in at seven and some are going off to work which is really tough and like some bosses can't help them and other players can get the time off but it, it does happen that's football as you understand it you can have two or three really good games against the top sides and then when you come against uh, a team that really I wouldn't say expected to beat but it should be a lot closer it shouldn't have been 4-0 and it's not very often FC Alaman draw a blank mm -hmm. um, and concede four which is very very unusual uh, defensively they looked as if they were pretty strong, um, but for whatever reason, it didn't happen. And that's where you need your midfield to work, to keep that close down, to stop the back four from being under pressure. OK, Tony, thank you very much. Tony, joining Rob at the Bowl from six o'clock this evening for full coverage of that FCL of Man game. We'll get team news from uh, Rob Pritchard very shortly. Manx Radio Sport. 
And with the time at uh, 22 and a half minutes after five o'clock, a busy day uh, for the local teams in rugby today. Let's head over to uh, Dave Christian to bring us all the action. Yeah, uh, thanks, Simon. Um, Douglas uh, took a big win against Vale of Loon two weeks ago, but they weren't able to repeat it today. And they uh, lost in the end 50-21 away at Sandbach. Sandbach gained a place with that result, go up into third place, and they look like they could be promotion contenders. Uh, Gihard Vizaghi, uh, the hooker, picked up his uh, third try in two games for Douglas. Sam McCord also crossed, and they earned themselves a penalty try as well. And Nathan Robson kicked two conversions on his debut. However, there was no bonus point for Douglas, and they face Altrincham Kersal next week at Portishe. And Altrincham Kersal just one point above them in the table, so that's a game that Douglas will most definitely be targeting to win. Uh, league position-wise is uh, probably a little bit misleading now. I think Douglas are ninth. Uh, but there's a very, very congested midfield in Regional 2 Northwest with, uh, I think, six or seven teams all within a point or two of each other. So uh, no great worries so far this season, despite only winning one out of five. Uh, they picked up a few bonus points on their way. So I think Douglas uh, it look like they're going to be safe this season from relegation. Uh, it just remains to be seen whether they've got the... Uh, uh, wherewithal to pick up the wins that they need to push into that sort of top five area and uh, be promotion contenders come the end of the season. At Bella Fletcher, we were there for Saturday Live and uh, not good news for Vagabonds. Uh, they had a very sluggish start. They leaked three tries in the opening 10 minutes against De La Salle and uh, never really recovered. They finished up losing. Uh, we initially reported as 48-21. However, I'm checking the RFU official results who have it at 57-21. Uh, I'm not sure where the extra points came from because uh, it was certainly too cold for me to have a kip on the sideline. So uh, we'll go with 57-21 as the official result. Uh, but sometimes you get errors when results are uh, put in and they won't probably be corrected until the next time the league tables are updated which will be next Saturday so I'll keep an eye on that one and we'll find out how it goes uh, for De La Salle uh, Hassan Sadrazam James Woodward and Ben Riley all crossed early on. Jay Boyd converted two of those that give them a 19-0 lead after just 13 minutes. Uh, Reese McAllister pulled one back for Vaggers at the other end. Cam Finley converted and that kept them in touch. But uh, Sean Watson and Paul Berry both crossed for the visitors before half-time and that extended the lead to 31-7 at the break. Just after the interval, Josh Stafford picked one up for De La Salle. Ben Riley and Jonathan Woodward both went in for their second tries of the afternoon. And by that stage, De La Salle were pretty much home and dry. Vaggers picked up some late scores from Reese McAllister and Harvey Collister, who was making his debut. Uh, and uh, that gave them a little glimmer of respectability, I guess, at the end. But uh, it was just a little bit too late for them. And uh, Vagabonds will now keep... Uh, their position right down near the foot of the table. I think there's just two sides below them uh, in uh, Counties 3, ADM, Lancashire and Cheshire. In women's NC2 North South, with a rather confusing title, it was great news for Vagabond's ladies, though. Uh, they won 22-7 against Eccles. Eccles went in front 10 minutes in, a try from Rosie Hoyle that was converted by Lucy Mills for a 7-0 lead. But from that point onwards, uh, it was Vagabond's. Jules Harrison, returning from a maternity break, picked up a try wide on the right-hand side to mark her return to form. Uh, Becky Dunn then went over just before half-time to give Vagabonds a 10-7 half-time lead. In the second half, Eccles piled on the pressure, but uh, Vagabonds lost two players to yellow cards for uh, technical infringements. Um, one, I think, was knocking the ball down. Uh, I wasn't able to see who got the cards, but uh, they were down to 13 at one stage. But uh, midway through the half, Malin Campbell, with a big solo run, pushed them 15-7 clear. And then Jules Harrison picked up her second of the game. Uh, half an hour into the second half and Vaggers were able to hold on and uh, pick up that opening win for them. In the uh, Manx Shield, it was a big win for Ramsey, 54 points to five at the Murrock Puck. Uh, three tries from Jake Richmond, two from Connor Goodall, one from um, Ben Hardman, 
One from Will Millsop and one from scrum half Danny Howard with Brandon Atchison on target with the boot for the rest of their points. The Western Vikings try scorer, uh, well, it was the veteran, um, Kerfee, Aaron Kerfee. Uh, Aaron Kerfee moved up to play for Ramsey. He was there on the Ramsey bench this afternoon. He's obviously helped Western Vikings out uh, by joining his old club to make up the numbers. And he picked up a try against his own side this afternoon. So uh, fair play to Aaron. Uh, well done for turning up. And uh, congratulations to Ramsey and Vagabond's ladies for their wins this afternoon. Uh, for Douglas and Vagabond's men, it's back to the drawing board. Dave Christian, thank you very much. And uh, just quickly bring Tony Meppen back in. I know you're uh, itching to uh, go, Tony, to get down to the bowl, but uh, just had uh, information through in there. Combi 2, uh, Ramsey Youth Centre 4, Paul Rose United 2, uh, Jacob Foster and Connor Corran with the uh, goals for Paul Rose this afternoon. Yeah, that's a good uh, result, that, for Ramsey Youth Centre. Keeps a bit of pressure up on the top, but... Yeah, we'll have a look at the league tables. That's my thing. When I get home after <laughs> FC Isle of Man, I get have, get something to eat and then uh, take on board what uh, the league tables are looking like after all of today's games. But, uh, yeah, it's been another great day for Manx football. I can tell you're not looking forward to the weather because normally you're out of here pretty quick when you've finished. And you, you're hugging seen, the radiator <laughs> at the moment. You're lingering as long <laughs> as you can. <laughs> I'm on my way, Rob. Manx Radio Sport. And uh, football and rugby done then. Let's, uh, before we go down to the bowl and uh, join Rob Pritchard with team news from that FC Isle of Man game, let's uh, move on to hockey and uh, Ben Cunningham joining me in the studio. And a uh, big day in hockey today, Ben. Uh, one of the three teams lose their 100% record, but let's start with the top of the table clash in the Premier League, the game you were at for us uh, this afternoon between Backers A and Vikings A. Yeah, uh, it was an absolute cracking game, high tempo, Fast pace, lots of uh, tasty tackles. Um, I must say it was uh, really well umpired by uh, Peter Foxton and Gary Corkill um, today. It got a bit heated at times, but they kept the game really well under control. So a uh, big shout out to them. Uh, but back as they came out on top and they keep their 100% record, which means Vikings have now lost their 100% record. Uh, Doug Quayle with one, Elliot Reid with two and Andy Whiten with two. And then for Vikings, it was Kim Carney, but it was a great game. And, uh, yeah, maybe on another day it could have gone another way, but uh, backers were just too clinical today. OK, and we, uh, let's look further up the uh, sheet then and let's go to the uh, the clash between the uh, the B teams. Uh, it was it was a reverse. It was uh, Vikings 5, backers B1. Yeah, and I caught the end of this game. This was obviously the game before uh, the game we covered for uh, Paul Moran. And uh, Vikings B looked really good. They did going forward, and just backers couldn't. Backers B couldn't handle it. Uh, for uh, Vikings B, it was ju- uh, Ben Dougal with two, Josh Dougal with one. So Ben Dougal's got bragging rights in that household tonight. Uh, Josh Knight and Kyle Gundogan, and then for backers, the consolation was from Tony Bentley Roberts. Okay, moving down to the uh, games down at Castle Russian, uh, Castletown at Celts three, Valkyries B one. Yeah, Valkyries B search for a, a win carries on as did as does Backers B's uh, uh, look for their first win in this campaign as well. Uh, Cast Town Celts though showing their class. George Powell, Ruby McCumman, and Hannah Lees all goals each, and then for Valkyries B it was Hannah Ashton. Okay, in a tight game um, down at King Williams College between uh, Harlequins A and Valkyries A. Uh, Valkyries A coming on top, 4-3 winners. Yeah, and in a preview uh, last night, I did say that last season, Harlequins A were Valkyries B's bogey team. And last year, they drew with them and then they beat them. Now, Valkyries A today have obviously got one back by uh, winning 4-3, but that sounds like an absolute thrilling game. Uh, Alex Neal with one, Oscar Lace with two, and Sam Moffat with one for Valkyries. And uh, for Harlequins, it was Oren Blakemore, Ewan Wiley, who's getting a, a little bit of a ripping for his uh, hair fashion today. Um, I, won't, I won't dwell on it too much. And a rare goal for Liam Tavener. OK, moving on to uh, Mixed Division 1, and uh, we start off with the early game at the NSC. Backers C3, Vikings C0. Yeah, Backers C keep their uh, good form up at the top of the league. Uh, good victory for them. Alex Stewart with two, and Conor Moore with one. Uh, Vikings D2, Castletown Southerners 5. Yeah, uh, Vikings D obviously got the win last uh, time out. Unfortunately, just today, they just couldn't handle uh, Southerners. 
For Southerners, it was Kira Kelly with a hat trick, Andrew Wynn Stanley with one, and Ned McGregor with one. And then for Vikings D, it was uh, Joe uh, Joe Roney and Bruce Gimbert. Okay, heading up to the uh, North Island for the uh, lunchtime game between Ramsey A. Uh, finished Ramsey A2, Valkyrie C4. Yeah, Chris Thomas with a hat trick for Valkyrie C and Jules Colley to get the fourth. And then for Ramsey, it was Nat Smith with both goals. And a big thank you to Jenny, who managed to get us the uh, scorers just last minute. Okay, and uh, mixed division at two, uh, Ramsey Ravens three, Valkyries D one. Yeah, real good result there for Ramsey Ravens. Valkyries D, though, they'll be disappointed after getting uh, a a win last weekend. They thought that the good form would carry on this weekend. Uh, But a 3-1 defeat isn't too bad. Uh, For Ramsey, it was Tom Howard, Chris Wells and Hannah Wilde. And then for Valkyries D, it was uh, Tim Evans. Uh, Castletown Camags 3, Backers Colts 2. Sounds like another good game. Yeah, I thought this would be a really close game and it's lived up to my expectations. Uh, Robbie Verga with 1, Alistair Ledgers with 1, Fern Bagazzi with 1 for Castletown Camags. And then for Backers Colts, it was Dan Stevens and Dave Partons. Okay, moving on to the uh, late game. Once again, thank you to uh, teams involved for getting this uh, score in for us for the uh, classifieds rundown at the top of the hour. Finish Harlequins B4, Castletown Cushags nil. Yeah, and Harlequins keep their 100% record up and they keep marching on at the top of the league. Tom Hurd with two, Corey Corkill with one, and Emma Walsford with one, and another clean sheet for uh, the Harlequins B goalkeeper. And I think, if I can remember rightly, they are very much a team that if you want to get a goal past them at the minute, you've just at the minute you just can't stop them mm. at the minute. Well, that's best best line of defence, that though, isn't it? You know, that's that's what these victories are built on. If you can keep a clean sheet, you've got a good chance of uh, taking all the points. Absolutely. Okay, moving on to mixed division three: Harlequins at C two, Vikings E four. Yeah, great result there for Vikings E. A really good young uh, youthful side. I must admit, I played in this game this morning, and. Uh, the, they've got so many players that are going to be coming through that team and going into their higher teams very shortly. Ollie Nandu, um, Emily Gaylor, Harry Woods and Addison Heaton with goals each for Vikings E. And then for Harlequin C, it was Reese Dowen and some fella called Ben Clung, but we won't, we won't talk <laughs> about his goal. It's 25 to 6, and that's the first time you've mentioned that, Ben. I'm impressed. Well, it's yeah, it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, elsewhere in uh, Division Three, Castletown, Cosney six, Backers Mix Books one. Yeah, Cosney keep up their good form at the top of the league. Uh, Kieran Collister with three goals, Sophie, Sophie Vivian with two, and Dan Stewart with one. And the consolation for Backers Mix Books was Cal Joyce. Uh, Ramsey rookies three, Castletown Carrick nil. Yeah, rookies will be happy with that win. I was on the fence on this game because these two sides are very much evenly matched. Uh, but Ray, uh, rookies coming out on top today. Uh, Jess Musgrove with one, Holly Bashford and Connor Parfit. OK, we move on to the mixed under-15s league. All these games getting underway at 25 to 4 this afternoon. So once again, thanks to the teams for getting the details to us. I've seen some of the messages come through and I know you've been scribbling the details down over there, Ben. Uh, let's start off with backers for Vikings 1. Yeah, good result there for backers. Um, for backers, it was even more Grace Evans and Ryan Cartwright were two. And the consolation for Vikings under-15s was Chloe uh, McGoldrick. Okay, Castan Sharks 6, Harlequins 1. Yeah, good win there for the Sharks. Uh, Aylan Morgan with 1. Uh, Aylan Morgan with 1, yeah. Ian McCubbin with 2. Uh, Henny Cullen with 1. And Chris Crompton Harvey with 2. And then the consolation for the Harlequins was Benji Barber. And the uh, final game of the day, Castletown Sabres 3, Ramsey 2. Yeah, good win there for uh, Castletown Savers. A narrow win. It sounds like a thrilling game, this. And it just shows that this under 15s league is just as thrilling as the uh, senior leagues. Uh, Charlie Volga with one. Uh, Jacob uh, Greskruski. I apologise if I've got that wrong, wrong. And Imogen Butler with uh, goals each. And then it was uh, for Ramsey, Tom, Toby Bashford, and Cam Eels. Okay, Ben, and uh, more league action next week. I think we're a couple of weeks away, aren't we, from cup and plate games? Yeah, so the cup, uh, the semi-finals of the cup fixtures are on the first weekend in November. 
Um, the draw, well, the the fixtures for that will be out shortly, plus where they're going to be played at and venues. Um, but next week, more league action. And if I can just put it out here on the radio, please, all teams, can you please, please, please keep sending in your messages with goal scorers throughout the day? And it makes my job a little bit easier. And also, it makes everyone else's life up here a bit more easier. All right, Ben, thank you very much. One double six, one double seven is the uh, number you do need to send those results and uh, details through. And if you want to use uh, WhatsApp, 07624 one double six, one double seven. Manx Radio Sport. And the final engagement for the Saturday Sport Classified this evening is to head down to the bowl and uh, we catch up with uh, Rob Pritchard. Team News is out for FC Isle of Man this evening. Yeah, good evening, Simon. Good evening, everyone. Welcome for the first time this evening to the Bowl Stadium ahead of this NWCFL Premier Division tie between FC Isle of Man and Paddyham with kickoff in just over 20 minutes' time. Can bring you team news. We'll start with the host, FC Isle of Man. In goal is Adam Killier, and then it's Callum Sherry, Jacob Crook, Ronan McDonnell, Alex Maitland, Carl Watson, Tom Creer, Ben Wasser, Luke Booth. Charlie Higgins and the captain Jack McVeigh. The substitutes for FC Isle of Man, number nine, Sean Doyle, number 12, Daniel Gerrard, number 15, Jamie Corlett, number 16, Sam Baines, number 17, Dan Hattersley. And for the visitors, Paddaham in goal is Matthew Hamnett. And then it's Kieran Sherlock, Lee Pugh, Hyun Sol, Gabriel Cole, the captain, Benjamin Hoskin, Jack Price, Freddie Matchell, Jacob Hebder, Joel Brownhill and Joshua Briggs. The substitutes for Michael Morrison's side, Willem Tomlinson, Joel Mellier, Daniel Morton, Tyler James and Kieran Malloy. Your referee this evening is Kieran Williams and his assistants tonight are Matty Shaw and Sam Palmer. Well, at the end of September, things looked uh, very bright and very rosy for FC Isle of Man, charging towards the promotion playoff spots. But going into the first week of this month, it's been a bit of a reality check for the Ravens. Seven days ago, they lost out 1-0 here to then league leaders Rams Bottom United. There were some positives taken from that game, but very few positives taken in midweek, where they suffered a 4-0 drubbing away at the hands of Cheadle Town. So no doubt Paul Jones and his players looking for a bit of a response to see if they can keep in touch with the teams in and around the promotion playoff places. However, the challenge is not going to be an easy one up against the Padaham side that reached the promotion playoffs last season. After an initially tricky start for Michael Morrison's side, they have hit some scintillating form in recent weeks. They have won, sorry, they are undefeated in their last 10 games in all competitions and they've lost just one of their last 16. And when it comes to league form over the last six games, only the top three sides of Chatterton, Ramsbottom United and Berry have fared better. This Padaham side, they've tasted joy here against FC Alabman before, but the head-to-head head record between the two sides both here and at the Ruby Civil Arena in Lancashire is rather mixed so if we're going on paper when these two sides have met it seems to be a close call but FC Isle of Man if they want to keep in contact with the teams toward the top they'll have to pull out a result here tonight to make sure they avoid not just a third straight defeat but avoid slipping away from the teams around them Padder and meanwhile just to add to that if they were to pick up maximum points here this evening they would in fact leapfrog FC Isle of Man moving closer to the summit so FC Isle of Man versus Padder kick off at 6pm here at the Bowl in the NWCFL Premier Division. Full live match commentary to come from myself and Tony Meppham on Manx Radio, Crystal Clear, DAB and AM 1368. Back to you. Rob, thank you very much. And uh, we'll be back to Rob in about 15 minutes' time as we pick up that game from the bowl. If you uh, do want to enjoy full commentary on that, stay tuned here to Manx Radio AM. Uh, thanks very much to uh, Tony Meppham, Dave Christian and Ben Cunningham for joining me this evening as we've gone through a comprehensive look at uh, all the results across football, rugby and hockey here on the Isle of Man. And thanks much, very much to uh, Rob Pritchard as well for bringing us that preview from the FC Isle of Man game at the bowl this evening. Rob will be back with Tony very shortly, uh, but in the meantime, Time. We will hand you back to our Radio Caroline weekend and uh, the team at Radio Caroline.